from a tender age, I always wanted to be a star. I mean, I didn't know when or how that was going to happen. But when other people wanted to be doctors, engineers, oh, nurses, lawyers, all of them. I always wanted to be a star. I was always mimicking stuff from the TV, acting around, dancing, dancing silly to music. I wish you'd have seen me. It always seemed like I was fooling around. And as you'd expect, I did have some few teachers, fellow students, sometimes even family members, who expressed that my fooling around wouldn't take me anywhere. I was hurt. I was discouraged. Because for me, my talent was the only life game plan that I had. So I set out to work hard, prove them wrong and become a star. Now it is one thing to want to become something and it is another to get there. <laughs> life in Mumias was simple. It was fun. It was amazing. You know, the trees, we used to live an hour from my grandparents' place. So every weekend, we'd be there playing with my cousin, going to the shamba. Sikulima, but listening to Zilizopendwa. <laughs> you know, the sounds of Daudi Kabaka. Samba Mapanga. That one, yeah. Still my favorite, Papa Lolo. Brings back good memories. And this was influenced by my grandparents. And it's because of them that till date, I still love and listen to Zilizopendwa. Life in Mumias was simple. It was amazing. But this was soon changing. So one day we get this announcement that we are to relocate to the big, bad city. Can you guess? Nairobi, of course. Fast forward, we move. And when we get here, I realize, boom, we've officially relocated to the ghetto. Whew, things were tough and tough. Then now you have to worry about insecurities, you know, seeking basic amenities that you have to speak in a certain way in order to be understood, in order to just fit in. To say that I encountered culture shock would honestly be an understatement. Ah, uh, I yearn for the good old days in Mumias, you know. There's Elizopendo weekends. Now we are eight hours away, so I cannot see my grandparents every weekend. So we lived in Nairobi for a while, till I was transferred to Lugulu boarding primary school in class six. So I had moved from Shags to the ghetto, and now from the ghetto back to Shags. Hey, be careful what you wish for. Now you can imagine the new culture shock, yeah? First thing I had to do was shave my hair. Bald, flat. Now I'm just coming from this private school where you're allowed to have your long hair, have braids, speaking English is the norm. Second thing I had to do in this school was try stop speaking English because when you did, it was watu wa Nairobi mnapenda kujifanya. Kujifanya. No, what does that mean? Honestly, though, you know, kids can be cruel to other kids sometimes. And most times I just wonder whether it is the projection of the cruelty of their parents. And sometimes most parents have no idea of how certain decisions that they make in the best interest of their kids can be so devastating and life-altering to them. I did not prepare for these changes. I mean, I hadn't seen them. I did not see them. You're just 11, right? So in the middle of changing cities, you know, changing schools, making friends, losing some, I realized that the only constant that I had in my life was me, the dreamer. 
So when I got to high school, I decided to check, take charge of my life, take control of my dreams, because while change inevitably happens to you, for you to achieve your goals and dreams, you must make it happen for yourself. I took part in all the drama festivals. I was doing narrative solo verses, went to the nationals a couple of times. I immersed myself in everything that I did. I loved doing what I did. Interestingly, you know, a lot of teachers do not care about talent. They do not take it seriously. But I had one or two teachers who were always there, you know, supportive, cheering me on. I actually had this one teacher who connected me with Hearts of Art, a theater group here in Nairobi. So upon my completion of my KCSE exam in 2017, I went for an audition with a group. Who? My acting was good, very good, but by high school standards, qua ground, things were different. <laughs> now, till date, I honestly don't understand why in high school we're not taught to just have a conversation, speak like a real person would. There's this thing song that we always have, instead of saying, um, I will be having Ogali and Skuma for supper. I will be having Skuma and... Why did we have to do it? So I remember standing on that stage and I gathered all the confidence I could muster. And I summoned my high school acting accent and I embarrassed myself to death. Even though I did that, that director saw a diamond in the rough and I was hired. So consequently, I had to change my approach towards acting, you know, learn, relearn, perfect, try to transform from being a high school actor to a professional actor. Whew. I was finally beginning to leave my dream. I went to the Kenya Institute of Mass Communication to pursue a course in broadcast journalism. I was posting on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook. I was active on social media. Although theatre may seem glamorous, in this country it's tough. People do not attach value to it. It is seen as a path, as a road that is taken by those who have failed to pursue real careers. So you have to struggle to sell tickets for people to come to your event. You have to struggle to get sponsor, sponsors for your event. If you don't do this, then you don't take a dime home. You're not paid. I remember in 2019, before the pandemic, we were to have a play on this stage. Now, the part that I hated most was always coming back, selling tickets. You had to nag and beg people and tell people, no, oh, please come to my show. I had posted consistently on my Instagram, on my WhatsApp status. A lot of people would see them. Some of them would ignore them. I had gotten used to it. I mean, it's a year. We're in 2019. But it was still hot, you know? Good thing I was unbowed. And then, boom. COVID came. And I went viral. It took me 19 years to become an internet sensation. Now, you remember those contacts who are blue ticking and telling me they have gone for funerals? All of them were posting me now on their WhatsApp status, that viral video. Claiming relationships, oh, they know me, oh, I was their desk mate, Makakuzo. I didn't know I had some relatives until that day. <laughs> wow. You know, it amazed me how people who had the time to help you build your career from scratch were not there. But right now, because of this one viral video, they were celebrating me, claiming me. And that is the moment that I realized that as things change for you, people will change in the direction of your fortunes. People don't know about the sleepless nights when you burn the midnight oil, the struggles, the pain, the tears, the hard work. People don't care or even know how I struggle to just get like a decent phone for my content creation. Or how sometimes 
People can be so cruel to you while you're just struggling with your own changes. So one day my number leaks. The calls start coming in. I had to bar all calls. Then the messages start streaming in. Some of them were encouraging, which I am grateful for. Some of them were flirtatious, which I definitely ignored. The ones that caught my attention were the cruel, unkind ones. You know, I always read about cyberbullying in school. I never really thought about it. I never knew it, w- it was something that would happen to me or anyone around me. I never, I never thought about it. But there I was, reading all those comments. You ugly. You look terrible without makeup. Some of them even wanted me to die. (sighs) It hurt. You know, when I went viral, I made a conscious decision to not delete my old photos and videos. Because in here, I wanted to look back 50 years and track my journey and see my growth. When I became famous, even before I prayed to God to help me never to forget myself, never to lose myself in my journey. I mean, I would have easily deleted them, but I did not. It really hurt me when people took videos and photos of where I could not frame myself well, of where I did not know how to stand against the light of where I had makeup on or off. It hurt to the core that people used my physical appearance to make fun of me. I mean, I was just getting out of puberty. My body was still changing. And it still is. You know, it's sick and it's sad that in 2022, we still have to talk about body shaming. I always say it doesn't hurt to be kind. I mean, think about it. Would it take away anything from you? Would it? So I made a tough decision of just surrounding myself with people who cared for me, people who were for me, people who healed me, people who made me a better person. When I started my theater career in 2018, my manager noticed me and he signed me up then. My management became my family. They've always vouched for me. They've always been there, even before the famous video. They've known the struggles, they've known the tears, the blood, the sweat. They're basically my ride or die. They know the ugly and they support the beautiful. My close family members who've always cheered me on. My close friends who've always bought my tickets, they're still here. And good thing, I also got a new family online. People who love me, people who love me, still do support me, cheering me on. Shout out to you. People ask me what my parents think about my videos. They love them. When I'm with my mom or my dad, they help me make my videos. My grandpa the other day calls me and tells me, oh, I saw your TikTok video. I'm like, what are you doing on TikTok, grandpa? (laughs) And it is because of him that till date, I still love and listen to Zilizo Pendwa. I decided to sanitize my social media space, my personal life, my personal space. Just block away all the negativity because my focus is on my goal. Now, when you saw the flyer that Asya Nasenya was speaking at Engage Tonight, what went through your mind? Be honest. 
<laughs> yeah, that got 21 year old who fools around on TikTok. Man, this engaged fox must have finally lost it. Some of you saw a girl who's going through transition before she finally begins to do amazing things in her life. And some of you probably wondered, guy, so was yet ni nani? You know, whatever category you fall in, all of us yearn for success. We want to be better. We want to thrive. We want to make an impact. As I grew up, I've learned that people change. Some of them change adversely. And you know what? It's not your fault. It's okay. If they don't celebrate your success, it's fine. Ignore them. Some prove to be reliable. Embrace them. For a very long time, I was the only constant in my life. Until I realized that change is a more reliable constant. And I must embrace it. I'm not just a TikToker. I'm not just a TikTok queen. I'm not just an internet sensation. I'm not just a YouTube vlogger. I am Aziad Nasenya. I'm a journalist by profession. I'm a radio presenter. I am an actress and shift happens. I'm just getting started.